Now, I want to talk about this morning, to illustrate this, I want to talk about a Bible character that we don't hear too much about in the science of mind. We hear about Abraham and Moses and Isaiah, and Joshua and Jesus. But I honestly can't tell you the last time I heard a lesson about Jezebel in the science of mind. You remember? Anybody? <laughs> okay. Yeah, Jezebel doesn't make the top 10 very often, does she? Okay, so, but this morning we want to talk about Jezebel. Okay? Hey, Joe. <laughs> Brad said, that's my girl. <laughs> okay, okay, so, so the thing we always want to remember about uh, the metaphysical interpretation of the Bible is that, number one, every character, every character represents a state of consciousness. And every character represents some aspect of our very own makeup. So that would mean that this character, Jezebel, would represent some aspect of our makeup. Hmm, okay. So in the metaphysical Bible, because you know in the science of mind, we don't read the Bible literally. We read it metaphorically, we read it metaphysically. So in the metaphysical interpretation of the Bible, Jezebel is an adulterous prophetess, a woman prophet who's an adulteress. Okay, and the metaphysical interpretation of, of her name means the unbridled passions of the physical plane of consciousness. Fillmore calls it the error of sense consciousness. Okay, <coughs> animal consciousness he calls it. Hmm. So if you're called a Jezebel, that's probably not a, a, a compliment, is it? Okay, somebody calls you that, they, they probably aren't being very nice in that particular moment. So I was reading this Christian web page, because uh, I, I like to read all the stuff that's available, and this Christian web set, uh, page said that Jezebel had the distinction of being known as the most evil woman in the Bible. Huh. So here, here it's talking about this evil woman, and yet Reverend Dar is saying that some aspect of her is in all of us. All right. So anyway, I was listening to a song this week while I was working out. And the song title is Jezebel. And as I was listening to the words of the song, I realized that it kind of sounded like they were talking about the same character. So here, I want to just share a few of the lyrics with you. It says, Jezebel wasn't born with a silver spoon in her mouth. She probably had less than every one of us. But when she learned how to walk, she knew how to bring the house down. <laughs> now here's my favorite line in the song. It says, Jezebel, what a bell. Looks like a princess in her new dress. How did you get that dress? Do you really want to know? She smiles. So she's saying, can you handle it? Are you open to how this came to be in my world? OK. Jezebel won't try to deny where she came from. You can see it in her pride and the raven in her eyes. Try showing her a better way, and she'll say, you don't know what you're missing. <laughs> and by the time she blinks, you know she won't be listening. OK? All right. So I heard that, and I, I kind of heard it from maybe a different place than, than that Christian web page was talking about, OK? <laughs> I, I, wasn't, I wasn't adhering it about a, a wayward adulteress, you know, a wayward woman who, somebody who would do anything to get their way. I wasn't hearing it from that space. 
I was hearing it, I was hearing about a person who was doing what she believed was necessary in order to have what she wanted in life. She was looking at the physical experience, the physical appearance, and because that was all she could see, this was the only way that she could conceive of having it. See, but you might be asking, but Dara, what does all this have to do with freedom? And I would say that, you know, Jezebel, if you listen to it, she, she's basically living free. She's living her interpretation of freedom right now, just like all of us. She's doing what she believes is necessary in order to get by, just like all of us. Now, granted, her bottom line is a little lower than most of ours. But she's living free right now. So that's the part of it that, that we really want to pay attention to. We really want to look at our lives and ask ourselves, what is it that I'm doing? And, and, the, and the, the active word here is doing. What is it that I'm doing in order to be free? What is it that I think is necessary in order to be free? Because Jezebel was coming from the physical, but if we're coming from the spiritual level, we realize it's, that freedom already belongs to us. If we're coming from the spiritual level, we realize that it's already ours. And that it's not a doing. It's not a claiming, it's not a manipulation, it's not a coercion, it's not a, a seduction. It is a claiming. It is. It's claiming what already belongs to us. So go back to what Dr. Holmes said, that, that, we, that we work under the delusion of, of being in bondage until we recognize that we are free. Say that to yourself right now. I am free right now. Breathe it in as you say it. I am free right now. It's already here. It's already mine. It's already given. And the fact that I believe that I'm not is denying it right at this very moment. The fact that, I, that I'm saying that it's not here, that I have to get it, that I have to go find it, is denying that it's, that it's here in the first place. The fact that I think I have to do something to have it denies its presence. I am free. So what do you think is necessary? What do you think you have to do in order to have that freedom in your life? What do you think that you have to do in order to have that health in your life? What do you think you have to do in order to have that prosperity and that abundance in your life? What do you think you have to do? Because each and every one of these are attributes of God, which mean that they already belong to us. They are already who and what we are. It's not a doing. It's a being. We claim it and we be it. I am free. My cousin years ago came home and she was, she was, she was, um, she was a member of Johnny Coleman's church in Chicago and she was really excited. She said, oh, you should have been to church this morning. This woman got up and she testified about her life changing. And I said, well, how did it change? And she said, well, you know, she lost her job. 
She said, and then after she lost her job, she lost her house. And then when she lost her house, she lost her kids. And then after she lost her kids, she went on drugs. And after she went on drugs, she became a prostitute to support her habit. Not like Jezebel. She started, she became a prostitute to, to support her habit. And somebody one day walked her into Johnny Coleman's church and somebody told her who she was and she heard it. And she heard it. And she believed what she heard. See, she wasn't like Jezebel that in the blink of an eye, she wouldn't be listening. She heard what they told her about herself. And she turned it all around. And my cousin said, and she got this 10 minute standing ovation from the crowd. She said, wasn't that a wonderful story? So I said, well, yeah, I, I think it was pretty good. I said, but, <laughs> I said, but you know, personally, 